Brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Hamdan kathiran ta'iban mubarakan fi. Wa na'hamadahu wa nasta'inahu wa nasta'gfiruh. Wa na'udhu billahi ta'ala min shururi anfusina wa siyyati a'manina. Min yahdihi allahu falamu'dilla lah. Wa min yudlil falahadiya lah. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ولا عديل ولا خلف لقوله ولا تبديل وأن سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم عبد الله ورسوله أرسله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره الدين كله ولو كره المشركون اللهم ارزقنا شفاعة محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم ولا تحرمنا صحبة إنك أنت أحمر رحيمين وأما بعد عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي المذنبات أولا بتقوى الله عز وجل يقول الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم يا أيها الذين أمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين ويقول الله عز وجل إنما مؤمنون إخوة فأصله بنا أخويكم وتقوى الله لعلكم ترحمون عباد الله اعلموا أن أسق الحديث كتاب الله عز وجل وخير حدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم وشر أمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدع وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من النار Beloved brothers and sisters In Islam I begin recommending for you but firstly from my own sinful self to have the proper awe, the proper regard, and the proper consciousness for Allah. As Allah mentions in the Quran, oh, those of you who believe, have regard for Allah, or have taqwa for Allah, and be with the truthful people. And he, Azawajal, mentions in this matter in regards to taqwa, as it relates to him, showering us more with his divine compassion and love. He says, and the believers are but one fraternity, one brotherhood and one sisterhood. So make peace between your brothers and be regardful of Allah or have taqwa for Allah in order that you may receive more of his loving mercy and compassion. Beloved brothers and sisters in faith, we have seen you know, over the past week where there have been mass protests throughout the United States of America uh, almost non-stop news coverage in relationship to two of the countless extrajudicial murders that police have perpetrated against black people here in America. Brianna Taylor being one in Louisville, Kentucky, and George Floyd in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And there have been extrajudicial killings of black people since these very high profile ones have uh, taken place, uh, this has never stopped. Uh, this is something that is, as Imam Jamil al -Amin has said in regards to uh, racism in America, uh, Hafidhullah, may Allah free Imam Jamil al -Amin from his unjust incarceration. Imam Jamil said that this affair is as American as cherry pie. Uh, what is taking place in America uh, as far as the systematic brutalization of black people at the hands of the state and the mass incarceration of black people by the state um, is something that is baked in into the DNA of American society. And in fact, when people say that the system is broken, the system is not broken, the system is operating exactly how it was designed to operate by the founders of this country who founded this country based upon a moral dichotomy. On the one hand, saying that uh, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. On one hand, on the other hand, the same person who wrote that language in the Declaration of Independence, Thomas Jefferson, is also the father of the three-fifths clause, uh, which is still in the American Constitution, but was amended saying that bl black people uh, the uh, the uh, people who are the enslaved Africans constituted three fifths of a human being uh, regarding population count. So uh, this is something that is very American. 
Now, what is our role with this as Muslims in terms of systemic police brutality and standing for justice? I'd like to give you just some uh, my thoughts as it pertains to the Quran and the Sunnah in this uh, regard. And, uh, and I hope to be uh, at the end to give some uh, practical uh, steps moving forward uh, from my perspective as a, an African American who was a descendant of the uh, enslaved Africans of this land and myself, who I consider myself to be uh, a spiritual inheritor of the way of Al Hajj Malik al Shabazz, Rahmatullah, who many of us refer to as Malcolm X. What are some steps forward? So, on the macro level, we shouldn't have any uh, doubts, or if we have some doubts, let me just uh, try to give a Quranic perspective upon this, that standing for justice for any group of people, and we use the Quran and Sunnah as the standard of what justice is, as well as the means in which we use to try to get justice in this earth. And we know that this earth will never be a utopia, that complete justice is is on the day of judgment uh, in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we know that perfect justice will never be achieved in this dunya, though we uh, we strive uh, for justice. But our ultimate goal is Allah. And our ultimate goal as Muslims is that we strive uh, for the pleasure, for the ridha, for the felicity of Allah, and for Allah azawajal's love. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a number of, of people and we have seven ayat in quran specifically where he talks about groups of people that he loves and one of those groups are the people who seek to be just and to stand for justice in nullaha yuhibbul muqsitin and surely allah loves the people of justice so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the quran in two places about us standing for justice and this thing for justice relates to people who show who show enmity towards us that we are to stand for justice in this regard and also act justly with those who have shown enmity towards us. In other words, uh, we can be madhulum and zalim at the same time. What I mean by that, we can be from an oppressed group, but we we can also act wrong or be a wrongdoer and step outside of the sacred law in addressing that. But nonetheless, we have a mandate as Muslims following the sunnah of our Prophet ﷺ to stand for justice, whether the people are Muslims or not Muslims. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, Ya ayyuhaladina amanu, kunu qawamina lillahi shuhada'a bil qista. Oh, those of you who believe be of those who stand up, meaning servants for justice. Or be, uh, all those you believe, be those who stand up and are servants for Allah. Witnesses, Bilqist. Witnesses for justice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, or with justice is another way of translating this. So our ultimate maqsad uh, should be Allah. Like, that's our objective. Our objective is Allah. And we know that we are all returning to Allah. So in our standing for justice in the society that we live in is not simply standing for the people, right? Uh, this is uh, something secondary. The first reason why we stand for justice is because we seek to live lives in this life as believers in Islam which is pleasurable to Allah and is following in the way of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of obeying the commandments of Allah and his messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and following in his footsteps that we may draw, draw closer towards the divine love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And Allah also mentions this and following the footsteps of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Alaihi Wasallam قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِكُمُ اللَّهَ Say to the people, O oh Prophet, if you love God, if you love Allah, then follow me, then God will love you and he will forgive you of your sins. 
and we ask Almighty Allah to guide us towards those actions that bring us closer to his divine love and that these actions that are receiving of God's divine love that is a means of forgiving us of our sins. Amin. So the plight of the systemic racism and police brutality that's taking place against black Americans, we see the word qawamin, those who literally comes from the word qiyam, stand up, that we as a people of Muslims cannot just be a people that simply seek middle-class respectability or seek just to live lives of comfort while there's chaos going on around us, or why people maybe who are outside of our ethnic or racial group are suffering, and we think that we can just sit back and watch it because it doesn't directly affect us. That's not supposed to be our inward spiritual uh, disposition, brothers and sisters in Islam. And also standing for the rights or standing for truth, for the sake of Allah, and as it pertains for black people, when Muslim communities stand for black people in America against police brutality, the Muslim community is standing for itself and with itself. Because about one third of the American Muslim community is black. So we can't say uh, uh, the Muslim community is standing in solidarity with the black community because the black community is part and parcel. The original Muslims who struggled against the false ideology of white supremacy in America. People who were Hufas, who were brought here in chains. These were African people. Many of them were what we would consider to be scholars of the Maliki school of thought. It's predominant in West Africa. And the people who stood for human rights here in the United States of America. And we mentioned Malcolm X, Rahmatullah Ta'ala, but many others. And I mentioned Imam Jamil Al-Amin, Hafidhullah that paved the way for the open practice of Islam that we have in America today, that was a struggle that was led by black folks who are Muslims. So standing for black life is in fact not, when Muslims stand for black life, we are standing for ourselves. And we have a collective spiritual heritage here in the United States of America that we must respect. And if we don't respect it, we all collectively will be the losers for it, brothers and sisters in Islam. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> I would like to mention uh, one other point before I mention some, uh, some steps. That the Dean of Islam and also staying for justice the way of our Prophet وسلم, is to offer a path of redemption for those who are in the status quo or those who have aligned themselves explicitly or complicitly with oppression who are in the dominant culture. The Prophet never canceled whole groups of people, brothers and sisters in Islam. He didn't cancel his oppressors. He didn't cancel those who were part of the system that tortured Sayyidina Bilal and Khabab and others who had been enslaved in Mecca. He didn't cancel them. As a matter of fact, he prayed for them. He prayed for, the, for their hidayah. After Ghazwa Uhud, at the time of Ghazwa Uhud, and Ghazwa Uhud took place in this Islamic month of Shawal, when many of the Sahaba were martyred, including Sayyiduna Hamza radiallahu an. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw his paternal uncle, who was martyred on the battlefield and had been mutilated by Washi in Hind before they submitted to Islam. And we know what Hen did. She, she took some of Hamza's liver and chewed on it and then, and then spit it out. And the Prophet وسلم, cried. He shed tears. And brothers, when you, when you see the suffering 
of the people out there, and especially our my black brothers and sisters, it's okay to cry and feel pain about it. The Prophet cried. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He cried relating to his people. He cried when he saw people who were killed. Sahaba wanted to know, was he going to pray against those people? Was he going to curse those people for what they did? He didn't curse those people. He said, Allahu mahdi qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamun. O oh Allah, guide my people, for certainly they don't know. So we need to pray for the people in the United States of America, to pray for their hidayah. And what is very different about these protests that are going on right now, brothers and sisters, is kind of unprecedented. Uh, I do believe that there are some bad actors who have infiltrated these protests for their own purposes. Like, I have no doubt about that. And that's on a couple of levels, uh, maybe three different levels of three different bad actors who I think have infiltrated these protests who aren't black people. But I will say that I believe the majority of white Americans who have joined this protest are sincere. And what is different about this than other times in the civil rights movement, that in many of these protests on the street now, you have equal amount of white people protesting as other people, people who are non-white. And some in Detroit, you even have more white people than black people protesting this systemic police brutality. Because it's not just about George Floyd or Deanna Taylor. And this is something that's different. So we as Muslims, we don't believe in canceling all groups of people. And we have to be very careful that when we have a critique about the false ideology of white supremacy, that we should despise and in fact hate the false ideology of white supremacy. Because part of having full iman is a hubul fillah wa bughdu fillah, that we love for the sake of Allah. And we also despise and loathe things or we hate things for the sake of Allah. So we should hate this. But there's a difference between the false ideology of white supremacy and hating that and white people. They're not the same. So we need to offer these white people. Now is a perfect time, brothers and sisters, Islam, to call people towards Islam, both in word as well as in deed. I'm going to read something to you that al Hajj. Uh, Malik al-Shabazz, Malcolm X, rahmatullah wrote in his pilgrimage when he wrote back to America about what he saw. And he wasn't simply uh, seeking uh, to be accepted by the dominant culture. I want to, I want to read this uh, to you. This quote, quote, if white Americans would accept the religion of Islam, if they would accept the oneness of God, Allah, then they could also sincerely accept the oneness of man, and they would cease to measure others always in the terms of their, quote, unquote, differences of color, end of quote. So we, as Muslims, we have a solution for America. Islam has the spiritual remedies to address the diseases of the heart, the spiritual diseases that inform racism, because at its roots, racism and anti-black bigotry is not simply a social-political problem. The social-political problem are manifestations of cultural issues, deep-seated cultural issues. And those deep-seated cultural issues are informed by spiritual maladies. And protesting alone and laws alone cannot legislate or do away with spiritual maladies or spiritual diseases. These are issues. And we, as Muslims, we have the ilaj or the spiritual remedies in the deen of Islam for racism, which is rooted in al-kibr and at takabr and arrogance in, in trying to subjugate people based upon pride. And we know this is an attribute of Iblis, of Iblis not bowing down to Adam, alayhi salam, 
and what he infamously said, he's the original racist. When he said, I am better than him, meaning Adam. He told Allah, because you made me a fire, but you made him of the clay. Now, action steps. There's internal and external. There is the long game as well as the media. So I want to start very briefly in these units with just some examples. This is for a longer discussion. The long game for us as Muslims, and alhamdulillah, we've done better as than we have uh, in decades past. But we have to work harder to embody the spiritual principles of Islam in our Muslim community and in, in, in our Islamic institutions. And Allah Azza wa Jal, in talking to the people of the book, mentions something, but it is a uh, instruction or is very instructive for us as Muslims. He said, do you enjoin people towards righteousness? Do you enjoin people towards justice? Because justice is a part of the conglomeration of this comprehensive word, albir. Do you enjoin people towards righteousness and justice, but you don't really practice it fully yourselves? Yet you recite the book. Do you not have any intelligence? So now is the time, brothers and sisters in Islam, that those of you who are non-black need to start developing deeper relationships. And I would even say in this particular time, relating to this issue, should be deferring to black leadership in the Muslim community. And don't be disrespectful, have adab. Don't try to skip over to secular so-called woke Black Lives Matter activists about how to deal with these issues and skipping over your own African-American brothers in the Muslim community. Don't do that, that's disrespectful. And maybe you may learn something about some of the uh, steps that we take and mistakes, and maybe you may understand why we address things in a different way than some of the secular activists out in the street. So don't disregard the black brothers and sisters in your own community. Alhamdulillah, we're doing better. So don't sidestep. We need to strengthen those relationships in organic ways. And there's uh, there's much more that could be said about that. The second thing is the short term. There are many ways to support what's going on right now. Protesting could be one, but it's not the only way. And maybe some of you have health concerns regarding COVID-19 and physical spacing and protests. There are black organizations that you can donate to, grassroots as well as on the national level, that are have certain steps calling for certain reform and certain tangible things that are being asked for. There's also supporting the black institutions in your own community. When there are calls to actions that be made for legislative change, picking up the phone and calling Congress people, writing letters, that's another way. Through artistic forms, one of the powerful things about the indigenization of Islam in the past, and especially with hip hop music from back in the day, was cultural expression in your poetry, in your spoken word to lift up this issue. This has effect. And of course, most importantly, your sincere dua to Allah because we are told by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at dua salahu mu'min wa imadu deen wa nur samawati wa aldu that the dua is the true weapon of the believer. And it is an integral part of the deen. It is a firm part of the deen. And it is the light of the heavens and the earth. So make dua. Make dua 
for the Bani Israel of America, for the African-American people, that we may be liberated from the, from the systemic Fir'aun that has oppressed my people, that has marginalized my people, that kills my people, that mass incarcerates my people. Pray for, pray for us. Shed some tears and make sincere dua. And this is very important. And if you can't do any of those other things, you can at least make dua. And if you don't have the, uh, the courage or you feel that it's not the right time to go to the streets, give a donation. And those both can be in secret. You don't have to be known in regards to that. With that, brothers and sisters in Islam, we ask Almighty Allah Azawajal to make us be the people of justice. Allahumma ishalna min al muqsitin. We ask Almighty Allah Azawajal to make us amongst the muqsitin, to make us amongst the people of justice. Allahumma ishalna min al munfiqin. We ask Almighty Allah to make us be those who are the spenders in His path. We ask Almighty Allah Azawajal to grant us love of Him, grant us love of His noble Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And grant us love of the mustadafin. Grant us love of those people who are marginalized, those people who have been weakened in the land, those people who have been oppressed. We ask Almighty Allah to grant us excellence in this life and excellence in the next life and spare us of the chastisement of the fires of sin. Rabbana antana fi dunya hasnatan wa fil akhirati hasnatan wa kinada bin nar. Inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi يا أيها الذين أمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وصل علينا معهم إنك حميد مجيد وبرك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما بركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبرك علينا معهم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على مؤمن مؤمنات ومسلمين مسلمات اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين المؤمنات والمسلمين المسلمات الأحياء منهم وأموات اللهم أصلح أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم اللهم فرج إن أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم اللهم ارحم أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم and we ask Almighty Allah as a wajal to set or write the affairs of the Umm of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم we ask Almighty Allah to give relief to all of the Muslims who are suffering in the Umm of the Prophet Muslims who are Rohingya and in China and in Yemen and Libya and Central African Republic and Philistine and, and Syria and all throughout the world, Kashmir and India, we ask Almighty Allah to grant all of them relief and we ask Almighty Allah to grant his loving, kind, compassion upon the last and best ummah, the ummah of Prophet Muhammad alayhi salam and please forgive me for anything that I have said uh, in uh, this speech, uh, brothers and sisters uh, in Islam. Um, but we, uh, as uh, Muslims, uh, we try to do our best and we uh, make mistakes along the way. And we ask Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Forgive us of that which we've done that was in error. And <clears throat> with that, brothers and sisters in Islam, I have uh, actually uh, concluded with that which I planned on uh, saying today. But I think I will add on one or two other additional points just very uh, briefly, and then I will. Uh, conclude. And that is this. Let me say, uh, let me pause. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-anbiya ayram rasaleen Sayyidina wa nabiyyina wa habibna Muhammadin wa ala alih aladhina adhabu allahu anhum wa rissa wa taharahum tatira wa ridwa allahi ta'ala ala sahabatihi al-rashidin mubarakin wa tabi'in lahum bi khayran insan ila yawm al-din wa alina ma'ahum bi rahmatika ya ahmar rahimin wa amma ba'd so let me uh mention just a couple of other points brothers and sisters in islam and then i will uh conclude uh inshallah so you know there are there's always that we have uh 
um, as Muslims, we have external challenges and internal challenges. And sometimes the internal needs more attention. And Allah as a mentions this in the Quran that surely Allah, surely God does not change a people or condition of a people and they change what's inside of themselves. So uh, we try to change the external and many times we neglect the internal. I want to give a little more discussion as it relates to what I mentioned in the ayah, in a mu'minuna ikhwa, fa aslihu bina akhawikum wa taqwallaha la'alikum turhamun, that the believers are one fraternity or one sorority, they're one brotherhood and one sisterhood. So reconcile matters between your brothers and sisters and have taqwa for Allah in order that he may receive, in order that you may receive more of his mercy. Um, the occasion of this, and actually the two uh, verses that, that precede it, in Surah Hujirat, uh, there is an occasion in which there was uh, some old animosity that came up between a man from Beni Aus and a man from Beni uh, Khazraj. And uh, you know we know that both of these are Medani tribes who uh, came into Islam. And we know that in the Hijaz, there were some old tribal beefs or tribal uh, rivalries, even wars, right, between tribes, uh, tribal tensions, tribal rivalries. And just because Sahaba said, La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah, didn't mean that all of these things just magically went away. No, they didn't all magically go away. And we have other uh, instances of, um, of even mockery, racial mockery that took place to some people, such as Umminin Sophia, Radlah and Sidi Muadinin Yom Qiyama Bilal Al Habashi, Radlah, and we have these in our hadith books, and we know about these. But the point that I'm making is that when we see tensions amongst brothers and sisters in Islam, that we should seek to try to rectify them, and we just don't let those things simmer. Right, and we do this for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, because He is the one who has instructed instructed us in this affair in, the, in in this regard. So we know that there are some tensions that reside um, within the Muslim community, ethnically and racially, and in particular, uh, certain people who have felt marginalized and certain people who have felt slighted. So. Um, we need uh, perhaps uh, some guidance on how we can work through these things. And I have some uh, suggestions for you <clears throat> very briefly. One of those is the first step for us to recognizing or the first step for us to fixing a problem or making us better is recognizing the problem and being very sincere, being very candid about certain things that have taken place in certain slights, both on the macro level and even if we have harmed people uh, on the individual level. And our Prophet wasallam, mentioned this, and Netmutawba, right? That the in order to change our ways or to repent, that the first step is remorse. But there has to be an acknowledgement, right? That actually something was wrong in order that there can be reconciliation or fixing the matter. Right. So we have to at least internally admit that and try to make things right with injured people or even marginalized injured communities. This is one suggestion. The other suggestion is just praying next to someone or having a, uh, a black imam speak to you. Uh, that's good, but that's not enough, right? So in order to make our community better, and we have gotten better, we have gotten better. But in order of us to be the prophetic community, that the Prophet worked towards and addressed his farewell pilgrimage on Jabal Arafah, we need to be intentional in trying to strengthen the ties of brotherhood and sisterhood. So I have a suggestion for you. We have in the history, in the seerah of the brotherhood and sisterhood compact, where the Prophet وسلم, paired off one Sahabi with another Sahabi. 
or he paired off a muhajir with an ansari, an immigrant with a helper, or we can even say ansari is indigenous. We should be trying to work to do this in our community to be very intentional. And this takes some struggle and some time. When shelter in place lifts, we need to take the time to go to other communities. And we should be very intentional to try to pair off our youth with someone of a different social economic background or and or a different ethnic background and try to set up regular times just where they can meet and eat together or play basketball. Didn't have to always be something instructional all the time to strengthen the bonds of, of brotherhood and sisterhood between the Muslims. To establish and try to have Qiyamulayl at different centers, a monthly thing where youth groups get together and a group of suburbanite youth and maybe who are South Asian, Arab, go into a masjid, maybe it's in the inner city, it's predominantly African-American or West African, and have a night program. Do this once a month. One month there, one month at another place. Another month, the black folks can go out to another masjid uh, out somewhere else and switch up speakers and let people eat pizza and uh, do camel leo together. Uh, play basketball together in the center's gym, and to establish these ties. Um, this is something that's prophetic in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was intentional in pairing off certain people with other people, right? And we have to be intentional in trying to um, cultivate brotherhood and sisterhood because in these times, many of us work so long and so long hours and we may be separated by distance from certain places. And it's easy for us just to sit in our laurels and stay comfortable in our silos or in our cocoons. We have to work past that. The other thing is um, the issue of marriage that the more issues of compatibility between a man and a woman, a young man and a woman, the better. For a healthy marriage. But we know that at Deen, what khuluq are number one. Deen and character are number one that we look for in regards to uh, marrying. And actually, Imam Malik, uh, who the uh, method Maliki was named after, he said that this is the primary and the only real condition for compatibility of marriage. And this was Imam Malik's position. That one that one thing that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did in El Medina is he specifically arranged marriages or perform marriages of people from different tribes and different ethnic groups. And this is not a full solution. There has to be many tangible ways. But I say to you, brothers and sisters in Islam, that I believe there's a crisis in the Muslim American community of sisters who are looking for suitable husbands and uh, they're not finding them and sometimes the parents try to restrict their daughters and even sometimes sons to one particular uh, group which is their own ethnic group from back home and i say to the community that For the future of Islam in America, the indigenization, the further indigenization of Islam in America, that we need to rethink this. And if someone that comes that's interested in your daughter, and they're from a different ethnic group or racial group, and if you if you and if you and if you do the research and see that they're upright, and you don't hear anything bad about them about the background check, let them. Don't stand in the way of them marrying your daughter just because their skin is darker or their parents came from a different country. Don't stand in the way of that. If we look at the spread of Islam and the Arabization of certain lands, we will see that predominantly when Islam spread, the Muslims that went to other lands for the dawah and for trade they didn't marry women from their own ethnic group. They actually married outside. You know, when the Sahaba opened Egypt 
and actually Amr bin al-As mentioned this, he said that when he was made the governor of Egypt, he said that the Egyptians are the best of the non-Arabs. Why? Because Egyptians weren't Arabs back at that time. Egyptians were Arabized over time. How are they Arabized? That Islam came and spread, and uh, Arab men began to marry Egyptian women or, uh, or uh, Kiptiyat and also Nubian women. And then over time, the people of Egypt, which includes northern Sudan, also northern Sudan, they were Arabized over time. Same thing with Morocco. Same thing with the spread of Islam into Tanzania or uh, Zanzibar. It even took place to a degree in Hyderabad. Right? And new cultural expressions were birthed from these types of relationships and marriages. So it shouldn't be anything strange that if someone is raised in America in a multicultural society, they're raised in a multicultural society, they go to school or university with people not like them, that they may be open to marrying someone else and doesn't look like them. I will give one example from the story of the Sahaba and I will conclude regarding this, this issue. Al-Miqdad ibn Aswad or Miqdad ibn Amr radiallahu an. He's called Al-Aswad but his real father his name was Amr but he was raised by the name of Al-Aswad who was a dark skinned Arab from the uh, tribe of the people of Yemen. He went to go to marry a woman from one of the people of Quraysh. And he was turned away. Actually, he tried to marry the, the daughter of Omar bin al-Khattab. And he was turned away. And he went upset to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about this. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam personally arranged him to marry Duba'a bint Zubair, anha. Who was Duba'a bint Zubair? This uh, Zubair was the paternal, one well, of the paternal uncles of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but he died before the revealing of the Quran. So this is the Prophet's first cousin, where this man who was not from Quraysh, who was a dark skinned, what we would call a black Arab, wasn't uh, allowed to marry someone who was turned away. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam not only found a wife for him, but found a wife from him from his own family. Right? So this is uh, instructive for us, brothers and sisters in Islam. So let us not be uh, a people who are like that. So we ask Almighty Allah Azawajal to soften our hearts. We ask Almighty Allah Azawajal to strengthen the bonds of us as Muslims. We ask Almighty Allah Azawajal to make us be the people who strengthen brotherhood and sisterhood amongst ourselves. And we ask Almighty Allah Azawajal to erase any negative asabiyah, any negative tribalism or lamsuriyah, any negative racism that is within our hearts. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والأصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر. Please forgive me. May Allah Azza wa Jal bless you and bless your families. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته.